while browsing eBay for electronic tat, as one does, I was looking at a... It was ob it's obvious that Chinese warehouse selling in the UK, but shipping within the UK. And uh, I was just random looking at their listings, and one of them was this. Let me uh, read you the listing here. It's described as CDI wire harness wiring loom coil rectifier for 50, 70, 90, 110 cc ATV quad set. It's a wiring loom out of a quad. And uh, this, it's listed here 1759. They've updated it since because uh, uh, it was 1659 when I bought it. But let's just say less than 20 quid in the UK shipped. And what you get in this wiring loom is you get the stator for the uh, magneto, which, uh, and the flywheel sits around this. It's got two coils. It's got the uh, low voltage coil. It's got the high voltage coil for the ignition. It's got a sensor coil. You get the start relay, the high current start relay for uh, starting the, the bike or quad by switching the high current to the start motor. You get the rectifier regulator. It's a mysterious module. I can't find a lot of information about what's inside this. This may have to depot it. You get a spark plug with a neat little sort of, it's almost like it's got three fingers at the end instead of just the, the core in the middle and then the one coming over the top. It's actually a little cluster of three uh, coming over the top of that. Um, it has, I'll stuff that in there, the capacitive discharge ignition module, another potted module, but I have found out what's probably inside it. It has the start key. Uh, and shut-off key, as it turns out. Uh, it has the controls for the handlebar, which has the engine kill uh, safety switch. It's got the start button, and it's got uh, off, low, and high for the uh, headlights. And it's got your potted ignition coil with the boot for the spark plug. And you think, well, that is quite a lot for 20 quid, is it not? How can they sell it for that? Is there a catch? Oh, and it's got the battery leads uh, as well. But not the link for uh, going to the motor. But I guess you know what you expect for 20 quid. I'd like to point out, and this is where, it, this is probably going to be amusing this video to the mechanics. Because I'm not really super au fait with bike electrics. I'll work in them when I have to, but I usually try and avoid it. Part of the reason I bought this is because by actually tracing this whole loom out, I'd be able to work out what everything is. It's, it's basically, it's an educational starter guide to bike electrics all in one wiring loom. Um, the reason I don't have a bike is because I would almost certainly buy a cheap Chinese crotch rocket and drive it irresponsibly, and that would not end well. So let's explore what came of this. Initially, the wiring loom came without stuff plugged into it, and it was quite a puzzle working out what went where. And uh, But I've worked it out. So where do we start? We'll start with the, the key switch. That's a good idea. The key switch starts by switching power to the system. Now, I have reverse engineered stuff here. Here's a little uh, picture I found on the internet. And the key switch, it's got uh, positive and negative going to it. Noting that green in this system is chassis. Black in this instance is actually switched positive, uh, which then goes through a safety switch to green and yellow, which is also still positive, and then to a more appropriate red and yellow to actually go to the solenoid. But uh, the key switch does two things. It switches power to the, the the bike in general, but it also has a shunt contact and will shunt uh, this black and white wire to the ground, the chassis, to actually basically disable the engine completely. And I'll, I'll cover that in a moment, how it does that. It's quite interesting. It's quite dramatic what it does, actually. So that's the key switch, which is power and killing stuff. We have the handlebar controller, which uh, it's just basically switches in here and a modest current contact just to switch that starter relay. Uh, I'll open this up and you can see inside. So I'll just whip these screws out. So uh, feel free to correct me in the, the comments down below if I get stuff wrong here. I did notice a big self-tapping screw came with. I'm guessing it's your design. It's designed to actually go over a handlebar and then a self-tapping screw get put in through here to actually lock it in position. Not really sure. Uh, in here, you've got the lighting switch is a fairly standard, completely non-waterproof. That that's a common theme here. Not waterproof. Let's zoom down just a little bit here. Uh, a not waterproof lighting switch with a very 
open and very strange uh, safety switch that when you click this, it shorts contacts out. When it's actually in the safety mode, when you click it in Kill Engine, it shorts two contacts together. Uh, the other thing it's got in here is the start contact, which has two wires going to its own set of connector. Okay. The other thing at this end of the loom, which is quite odd because uh, we've got the spark coil and we've got the electronic ignition, the uh, capacitive discharge ignition CDI. Um, I shall go into this in great detail. I'll give you, I'll show you a little uh, doodle. But um, it's at the completely opposite end, and I'm not sure if this is just a... I'm not sure the layout of the, the engine, but I'm guessing everything must be fairly close, because here is the magneto mounted in the side of the engine, here's the start uh, solenoid for the, the actual starter motor, and the battery's down here as well. But up at this end, we've got the spark plug, which seems quite strange. I thought that would have been closer down to the engine and the loom might have come up onto the handlebars. It just seems a very short loom. Maybe that's why it was cheap. Um, the magneto is particularly interesting. Let's take a look at the magneto. It has two windings here. It's got this sensor. It, it, I couldn't work out what this was at first because I'm not au fait with the engines. It turns out it's an inductive pickup that voltage is induced in it and then it triggers the timing for the capacitive discharge to fire a pulse through to this uh, spark, the ignition coil which then fires the spark plug. It's got this winding which is the low voltage winding and uh, this has uh, a tap on it. It's basically got, uh, it's grounded at one end of the chassis, most stuff is grounded to the chassis and then there's a, a tap off the winding uh, which is for lighting I believe. That feels a bit rough. Is it just a lack of coating or has it been scuffed uh, and then it goes further and then there's another uh, conductor comes off and that is for the battery charging this on the other hand is quite spicy this theoretically puts out between uh, in the region of about 200 volts which uh, is quite severe but there's a reason for that it's actually used to charge capacitor there's also a free blob of solder on the uh, tape here I don't think that's supposed to be there I won't pick it off in case it damages something or it's supposed to be there. Uh, very strange. Right, tell you what, let's, uh, what am I going to do here? I shall show you uh, other things. Now, I already mentioned this to the patrons, and one of them said what the connector's like. And the connectors are, quite frankly, a bit shit. Nothing is waterproof, but then what do you expect? It's a motorbike. Nothing is... Why do they not make things waterproof? Everything corrodes in motorbikes after a while, apparently. Uh, the push together bullet connectors for the uh, the stator on the magneto were super loose. I had to widen them. That one I hadn't widened. This uh, I had to widen them out before they'd actually make a decent fit. But that is pretty much the sort of fit when they arrived. So that I think that's the plastic housing is doing more of a job in actually keeping that in there. So uh, if you get one of these for any reason, um, it's worth flaring these out a bit before you put them in or replace them with better connectors. Um, I'm not sure which direction to go here. Uh, what's the best thing to say about this? So, right, okay. The capacitive discharge ignition is particularly interesting because traditionally in a car, in the old days, uh, they would have had the uh, rotary distributor on the engine and it was basically a little cam would rotate around the contacts and the high voltage from the ignition coil would go to the middle of that distributor and as each contact came within close to the uh, other contact going to a spark plug a little contact would open and close and it would fire a pulse it would basically slap this thing directly across the battery and it would create a high voltage pulse and uh, that would then go out to the appropriate spark plug as that little arm was going around. This then, one of the big updates back then was uh, to solve reliability problems of those. They had what were called capacitive discharge systems, whereby that little contacts, because it used to carry a lot of current, they used that to trigger a circuitry, which basically charged the capacitor and then dumped the capacitor uh, through this, but used something like a thyristor, and what that meant, or a thyristor or a transistor, and what that meant was instead of relying on mechanical contact, you got an electronic uh, switching device, and you got a very decisive pulse, and it just improved the spark. It was just a way of, way of making those things more reliable. Uh, 
This works in a similar way. I'll bring in I'll bring in the notepad at this point in time. I'm really not sure how to go about making this video because uh right, tell you what, we'll just uh, take it bit by bit. Here is the stator, and it's got that high voltage winding output. It's also got the low voltage winding with the yellow uh, conductor uh, dealing with the lighting, but there is possibly a shunt regulator in here. I don't know. This is all potted and resin. Uh, I don't know what's in that. Uh, but it may actually, if the voltage goes up too high, it may actually physically shunt that to the uh, to the chassis. The white charge wire, slightly higher voltage, goes to charge the battery, but there's uh, possibly either a shunt or uh, I think it's more likely a gating system that gates it to the output uh, until the battery is topped up to a level that it's fully charged. That's not being used here, I don't think. Um, I'm not really sure. I think the lights are being run directly from the battery in this particular loom. The other interesting component worthy of note is the CDI module, the capacitive discharge ignition. It takes the 200 volts in. It seems to go through a diode and charge a one microfarad 400 volt capacitor. The circuitry has that in inductive pickup. So here's the high voltage winding. Here is the inductive pickup. When the uh, the flywheel gets round to position, a magnet passes this, it induces a voltage in this, which uh, then triggers this thyrist thyristor. I think there is probably, looking at uh, random schematics on the internet, there's probably a capacitor here, or it might actually be there, or it could be anywhere really. It's just to avoid false triggering of the thyristor. But what happens normally is that this is charged up to quite a high voltage with that going positive and that going negative. And it's just a one microfarad capacitor. It's one like the sort you'd actually find in a 400 volt, this, like the sort you'd find in some capacitive discharge, uh, capacitive dropper LED lamps. So it charges. Uh, the current uh, flows in, charges that capacitor. There's this diode here, which will just let the capacitor charge, but also some current will flow through this winding. They are effectively, although this is mounted remotely, this the spark coil, they are effectively, I'll just draw that in then, they're effectively connected to the same line, the chassis. When the thyristor fires, it pulls this down, and this end of the capacitor down here, so this end, end ends up positive, this end is negative, the current is dumped through the coil, but because this diode here is now in the wrong polarity, current won't flow through that diode. It dumps the current through the coil, induces the spark in the output acro across the spark plug, and then as the field collapses again, this diode will then help protect that thyristor by shunting the back EMF spike you get from that coil. That's how I think that works. Here's the interest bit. See the word kill here? That is dramatic. <clears throat> when this uh, kill switch is pressed, it shunts that 200 volts to ground. It basically just shorts it out and that stops it charging the capacitor and that basically stops the ignition system in its tracks. And there are other connectors. I'll show you the other connectors in this afterwards, in fact. But that is the gist of capacitive discharge ignition, CDI. It's a lot simpler than I was expecting. You do get complex versions. You get special racing modules with timing uh, control and stuff like that. I'm guessing, really, all you have for time control is, well, I don't think you have much in the case of time control. It's where the magnet is mounted on the flywheel. Other connectors on here that are of interest. This stator, it's called a stator because it stays static. It's not, uh, a rotor is the rotating bit. Effectively, the rotor in this motor or generator is the flywheel with the magnets in it. But this stator, uh, it may be the loom is for other stuff. It has this other pair of wires, but the, if I pull this, you'll see them moving. They are just a little pair of wires going down there. I'm not sure what they're for. Uh, red and green and black. Uh, red and green, is that not used? Uh, not sure if that's a standard colour in another part of the loom. Talking of colours in other parts of the room, this is something that when you're watching uh, Erico at South Main Auto, quite often you'll be tracing a wiring loom out. And he'll do something like, say for instance this, he'll look at something like this, and this, fortunately, the colours are fairly standard. They go, they, they match. 
Likewise, the colours and the state are pretty much match, which is just as well, given their little push together connectors. But then you get something like this, which is the capacitive discharge ignition. Moran. Oh, no, no, that's not. That, uh, that was the capacitive discharge ignition I was looking at there. You get the little hand control here. And the colours are all arse for elbow. It's like, you know, red goes to brown, black goes to green, and blue goes to red, and brown goes to green. It would be nice if they standardised that. There must be a standard, but they don't. They, it's not standardised. Interesting stuff. Uh, other things, incidentally. This kill switch... Uh, on here, that's the start button. The kill switch is in parallel also with the ignition. When you turn the ignition off, it also shorts that out. And along the loom elsewhere is engine kill switch, another uh, option. So these are all in parallel. And if I bring the meter in, uh, it's in continuity. And I stuff it in here. Stuff it up the end. I should stuff it up the back. That is showing the kill. Uh, if I turn the ignition on, that goes open. And if I then kill it on this... Oh, let's, uh, let's stuff the leads in the back of this, where they're going to make a better connection. So if I use the kill switch in this, that shunts the engine's ignition system out. And also the key switch there. When it's off, it shunts ignition out. There's another safety circuit in here that won't let you start the engine unless the safety circuit is made. So on the schematic, the positive goes through the key switch, the green and the black and white, there for the uh, kill. The red is switched to the black wire and then to the green and yellow and it goes to the starter button, then it's red and yellow goes to the starter solenoid. Uh, there's a safety circuit in here which has a pair of tails coming out. It's got this tail here, and it's got this connector here, but they're both in parallel, so it's presumably either one or the other must be made to actually allow it to start. I'm guessing that might be the clutch safety system, whereby if you stall in the middle of a... Uh, say you're driving round a road junction and you accidentally stall the bike, you can't start it unless the clutch is depressed or something like that, so you don't if it's still in gear. So it might be part of that safety circuit. Not really sure. Other connectors at this end are... You've got two of these, which are for the headlights. You've got the uh, ground and you've got the high beam and dipped beam. Then you've got another connector over here. It's got the kill switch connection, but I'm not sure what this one's for. This one has two... It's got the a ground, and then it's got two connections, one of which will indicate when the headlights are in any position. It might just be for side lights, or it might be just a dashboard indicator, or just a diagnostic indicator or something, just to show you when the lights are on. But it also tells you if the, uh, the safety circuit is intact, which, uh, it just makes me think maybe this is for indicators, but you may know better. What else is there to look at here? Is there anything else worthy of note? Oh, yes. A lot of the wires are common together, particularly the greens. There are lots of greens, and they're common together somewhere, but I'm not sure where. I think it's within this loom. Let's see what the pudding joint looks like. I shall uh, take some of this tape off. I think this is going to take ages. I may pause momentarily. This looks like uh, the split flexible trunking where they've actually placed it over the wires. It is the split stuff. They've placed it over the wires and then they've uh, wrapped it in tape to hold it all together. So I'm going to remove that. And just uh, because it's going to take a while, I shall pause momentarily. One moment, please. Yeah, that uh, sleeving was really just hiding a shit ton of splices. Let's take a look inside some of them. Here is the the earth one with lots and lots of connections going in. Are they soldered? I hope they're soldered. Or connected, twisted, I guess, twisted and then soldered and put in here. The soldering is a controversial thing. Some people say it makes them brittle and prone to breaking. Or are they just twisted or crimped? What do we have in here? We have crimps. That's very spidery. It's a little, just basically, little uh, brass 
feral that's been crimped round that. What about the other ones uh, that are just like a couple of red connections? Let's take a look at this. I could try and unwrap the tape, but uh, finding the end is kind of elusive. I shall just, uh, I shall use my snips and nibble along it. What have we got? What have we got? Same again, perhaps? See if I can damage the wiring loom in the process. I kind of got this for all its loose components, just so I could investigate them. Once uh, I've shown you, yeah, it's just another of those little, uh, little inline brass crimps where they've laid the wires in and then just crimped it round them. I suppose that's reasonable enough. Looking a bit splayed, but that's just where the, the strands have gone out over the end. Okay, that's interesting. Right, let's clear this out of the way. This big pun of mint. <clears throat> and take a look at the drawing. Let's uh, zoom out to make this fit in. Because I've uh, noted, I uh, traced all those wires out to find what they were. So the we have the uh, the magneto stator with the white and yellow going up to this regulator. I really have to depart that and see what's inside to see if they're treating the yellow. I'm guessing that maybe you're you're supposed to put another wiring loom in this for the lighting. I'm not really sure, and take a tap off this, or it's, maybe it's just standard components. But in this case, the white and the yellow are those two tapped outputs from the magneto uh, stator. Um with reference to the chassis, and they are going out effectively well, to charge the battery. Um, the magneto stator, it's got the, the chassis connection, it's got the blue and white, which is the pulsed signal, and the black and red, which is the high voltage going to the uh, capacitive discharge ignition, which then goes through the black and yellow to the coil with reference to ground. And that common black and white wire there is the safety one that actually, when it's shunted to ground, it just basically shorts out the high voltage supply and stops that running. The big red line here is the Kai current feed to the starter motor via that starter solenoid, which comes via the start button on the handlebar after the key switch and the safety switch. And that pretty much sums it up. It took a lot longer to actually reverse engineer that. I was working out what half the stuff was. The things that caught me out initially was the, uh, well, apart from the weird colour codes at some point, was things like the safety switches and the kill circuits being sort of different. I didn't realise they had those in uh, in the vehicles. Useful to know. Um, but yes, I now have the urge to depot components and see what's inside them. I want to... I've ordered another uh, module. Is it the regulator module I've ordered? I think it is. Uh, but with clear resin. But goodness knows what's going to come from eBay. It Theoretically, the listing shows the clear resin. You can see the circuitry through it. But... What arrives may just be another one of those, you know, an identical component to the one I've got there with the black case. Uh, Connector-wise, <clears throat> as I say, the connectors are not waterproof, but they, they are all a fairly modular approach. I'm not sure what quality the wiring is, you just never really know. It's one of these things that, you know, I think if you've got a quad, you really have to, you have to be au fait with actually troubleshooting things and uh, fixing it when it goes wrong. But yeah, interesting stuff. So really, very cheap for the amount of stuff you're getting. And uh, pretty much a one wiring loom education in quad and scooter electrics. Really very interesting. Well worth getting and taking apart and reverse engineering. It was really enjoyable. It was almost like a puzzle. Very good.